What's good then, YouTube? Hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic. Welcome back to another video here on our channel. Or if it's your first time, welcome in to a brand new video here on the channel. Uh, my name is Alex, also known as a FIFA analyst. And today we're going to be taking a look at a formation and a tactic, which I haven't used in a very long time. But it's something that I feel like is starting to come back in to the woodwork for people to use on FIFA 22, given how the game is kind of being played right now. What I need you to do, if you enjoy this video, if you find it helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. That is greatly appreciated. Down in the comment section below, the question that I'm asking you is what is your favorite formation right now on FIFA 22? What has been your go-to over the recent time? We'll jump into the tactics and whatnot in just a second, but I do want to kind of give a quick roundup because obviously we've got a few cards in here that maybe some of you are worth thinking about picking up, completing, all that sort of stuff. We did do a player review on a Stephen DeFry, then I heard say his name, uh, and I do like him. I think he's a very good centre-back if you are running a Serie A side. We do do a lot of player reviews here on the YouTube channel as well, so check them out if you are interested in that. A very solid centre-back that can be used up until team of the season comfortably. Mkhitaryan, I still think, is very viable and usable for a lot of players. Dybala is someone that I'm testing at the minute, and I can't really justify the difference in price between Dybala and Mkhitaryan. Abraham has been doing a job coming off the bench for me, but I'm still a little bit hit and miss with him. Uh, and I do think Ben Yedda is a little bit behind the power curve already. I wouldn't really recommend completing him if you can avoid it. And Dombele is still doing a job for me. I really like him, but that Lucas Paqueta, that's how you say his name, is a very, very solid card. And Varane, that's what we got in our prime icon pack. Woeful, woeful, all right? Hopeful. Custom tactics. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So I'm still running the 5-2-1-2. Two, two. That, that's a tactic that I have been running. And you guys know I've been running that and having a lot of success with it. That's one of our previous videos. But we're going to be talking about the 4-2-3-1 today. It's a funny one, actually, because the 4 2 3 one for me is always my go-to formation on FIFA. It's what I enjoy the most. It's what I think is just the most sound in defense. Very good in the attack if you know how to use it. And overall, a solid, solid formation. I haven't used it in a long time, though. No. Why? Well, I've been using the 4 4 2. I've been using the 4 1 2 1 2 narrow, the 4 3 2 1, the 5 at the back. I've been using some 3 at the back. So I've been using a variety. And the 4 2 3 1 hasn't been used for myself in approximately over two, over two months, really, consistently, anyway. So we played all of our games this weekend with a 4 2 3 1. Uh, we hit 16 and 3 with this team. And that, that's what we use, and this is the tactics that we had set up for it. And I'll talk about how to play it and what you should be looking for as we get to the end. I'll go for balance on the defensive style. The reason for it, if you look at my centre-backs, I've got Eric Bailey, I've got Collins. I don't think they're the greatest centre-backs. I think there's much, much better centre-backs out there. I also don't have a proper DM, let's say. Veron's not great defensively and Dombele's not great defensively. And their pace can be a little bit lacklustre. So... If I was running, say, press on heavy touch or press on possession loss, there's a good chance I'll get caught heavily with this team. If you are running Kimpembe, Marquinhos, Hakimi, you know, these big centre-backs and full-backs and big DMs in the middle, maybe like a Kante, a Vieira, just anyone with a good little bit of pace that can cover the ground quick, you could run press on heavy touch and be a little bit more aggressive if you wanted to. But for me, with my team and my setup, I just wanted a more neutral kind of way to make sure I don't get caught in behind and just be very solid defensively because that is what the 4 2 3 one does for me. Now, width. Let's talk about width. I go for 30 on my defensive width. Why? Well, basically, the 4 2 3 one, you want your two DMs to protect your centre-backs, right? I want my centre-backs to be really no more than three to four yards away from each other. And I want their right back and left back, their partner next to them very close all of the time. What I am doing here is essentially giving up my wings to the opponent. And I'm saying, look, you can have the wings. I'm not going to let you drive the byline. I'm not going to let you cut in easily. I'm not going to allow you to do that. If they cut in, that's fine. I switch to my DM and my DM presses that player instead. But the fullbacks are responsible for just covering the wings as best as they can. A narrow width helps you bring your full uh, your attackers into the fence as well and make two almost banks of four. It makes it really difficult for the opponent to break down. Okay, so that's what we go with on there. Now the depth, this is all down to personal preference and down to your team. So what I would say is if you are not very good at right six switching, you can't track the balls in behind. Maybe you don't second man press well in the middle. Maybe you don't press well in the middle as a whole. You may want to run about a 40 depth because you just don't want to give up too much space in behind. Counter-attacks are brutal on FIFA 22. For me, myself, with the team that I run, I go 59. 
Now, if I was running again, quicker defenders, quicker midfielders, a better team, maybe, I'd probably be looking at about 70 depth here. But 59 gives it so that when the opponent has the ball, my defense doesn't drop back immediately. You know, my Bailey doesn't go, charge, and get back to De Gea. They hold a little bit, but they don't hold for too long. So even if the opponent does break on the halfway line, they'll then slowly start to get back. It's, it's a good balance. It works really, really well. Now, build-up play. This is something I've been testing, changing. A lot for this year, I've gone balance and direct passing. That, that's what kind of is the meta for a lot of players on FIFA 22. I've actually gone for slow build-up now. And when I first started playing this tactic and this setup, the one thing that I will say is kind of say to yourself, pass the ball 15 times before you look to get into the final third. Work your way up properly. Now, do switch the flip... Uh, Flick the switch and change it at times and go for an over-the-top through ball, a quick through ball, every now and then. Make the opponent guess. Keep asking the questions. But build up slowly. Simple X passes in defense, in the middle of the park. Don't always trigger runs to send your players on those runs. Build up and try and play football. Quick one-twos, moving the ball, pass and move, asking your team to show for you and kind of going from there. And a slow build up, it took a little while to get used to, but you can utilize it very well. And in line with that, we go with possession. I know this is weird, right? This is what I used to run a lot throughout a lot of last year, FIFA 20 more so. And it's about trying to play football and trying to get your players moving on your own accord. What does the possession you know, kind of tactic do? It basically tells your players, come and receive the ball with your back to the opponent's goal. Don't look to run in behind. Now, if you want to run in behind, tap your L1 button on PlayStation, LB on Xbox, and then your attacker, who you're pointing towards, will go on that run. They will run in behind. And that's what you've got to utilize yourself. But if not, simple little X passes, pass and move, one twos, and try and cause the opponent's team to have an imbalance from that. What you can find is that a lot of players are so used to having to switch and cover the balls in behind, they'll come and be aggressive to you. And then you can go for a quick one two back from your winger to your cam, and then bang, you can get in behind as easily as that. It works really, really well. Again, takes time to get used to. Now for the width, definitely just a meme here, by the way. 69, I'm childish, I know. 69 in the attacking width. I'm really looking to spread the play in this 4 2 3 one. I'll talk through my players in a second in the attacking side of things and what we look to do. But I really want to try and drag the opponent's centre mids out. If I can get up against their centre backs out on the wing, good. So if they commit a fullback and their centre back comes over to cover, makes a big gap between the two centre backs, I can then get the ball back into the middle and exploit in the middle. And that can work really, really well. Again, takes a lot of time to get used to, but you can give that a go. Players in box, we go quite high here, actually. Uh, we go for seven. And this is just going to give your cams the ability to get in and step into the box for the cross. For any knockdowns, I've been crossing a lot more on FIFA 22 recently. This really helps you pick up those loose balls. Think about the Frank Lampard, the late runners in. Your centre mids will do that. My Dombele gets into that position as well. And it is very, very crucial. Now I'll go for two corners. I go one free kicks. Go for what you want here. It's personal preference. Now, for the setup of the team, I have Dembele and Neymar out on the wing. You need pace out on the wing. You need someone that ideally can beat a man. Think about skill moves. Weak foot's ideal, but skill moves and pace is the best thing that you can go for here. Your striker, ideally, have a five-star weak foot and a minimum four-star skills. I would prefer five-star skills and a four-star weak foot if it was me. Unfortunately, I have Yedder in this role. I wouldn't use an Abraham up here. I wouldn't use a Giroud. I wouldn't use a big, big striker. I'd use a striker that's got a bit of pace, got a bit of strength about them, and the ability to just beat a man. Yedder isn't the great at this role. Someone like Mbappe is probably your perfect player. Center attack in mid is Griezmann. Four-star, four-star, have to have good weak foot, have to have good skills, the ability to pass, the ability to shoot, the ability to dance past a man. Griezmann fills that role quite well. And Dombele in left centre defensive mid and Varane in right centre defensive mid. You want a better partnership there. Pick your box-to-box. -box. It might be a Kevin De Bruyne or a Bruno Fernandes. It might be Lucas Paqueto. It might be Renato Sanchez. The other one needs to be like a Chuchimicheni, a Vieira, a Kante, a a DM, right? A proper, proper DM. I start with the strike and then on the instructions. Stay forward. Nothing else there. I don't think you need to do getting behind. If you do get in behind, it kind of overrides the possession instruction. You want them to have the back to the striker, uh, to the centre back at times, to allow them to receive the ball into feet. If you then want them to go in behind, trigger the run manually and you can get that. Centre attacking mid is on completely balanced. Let that player do their own thing. They will make the runs how they seem fit. 
Now, for the right attacking mid and the left attacking mid, the only changes we have on them is get into the box across. If the ball's on the opposite side of the pitch, you want your, your winger on the opposite side making that run in and getting involved for any loose balls that may appear. The right centre defensive mid, this is your defensive mid, all right? This is your Vieira's, your Kante's, you, you know, all of them. Cut passing lanes, stay back while attacking and cover centre. Have them there. They'll cover and protect the centre backs as best as they can. Now, this is an interesting one. The left back is on overlap and balanced. My left centre defensive mid is on cover wing and nothing else. Why? I want my full back to get forward. I need a little bit of something going there with them. I, I don't like just having to stay up while attacking on both fullbacks. I know so many people do it and I do it at times. And I just find that then you're just attacking with these four players and you don't have anything. Give yourself an overload. Use one of the fullbacks. You're more attacking fullback. This DM then covers for the left back if he ever gets caught out of position and them to swap around a little bit. Doesn't happen too often, but on the occasion, having that cover wing has saved me. Just be mindful that obviously you might be losing a bit of a gap in the middle if your left centre defensive mid does do that. If your attacking fullback is on the right hand side, that's fine. Just swap them positions around. It's really not a big deal. The right back stab up while attacking and everyone else on completely balanced. No changes there. If you've got a good keeper that can come for crosses, I would recommend the sweeper keeper and the comes for crosses. Straight uh, comes for crosses. They can work really, really well. David De Gea though absolutely stinks and doesn't like crosses. He's very scared of them. So we don't have him on that. I've tried it and he doesn't get away with it. And that's what I'm using at the minute. As I said, 16-3 and three in Weekend League is what we got on the Friday. Recording this on a Saturday. And uh, yeah, it did really, really good. Enjoyed it. I can't show you where, where I finished. But that was what I used. Uh, I had a lot of success with it. It took me a few games to get used to. But as we started to fine-tune and change some things, it was something that I really, really enjoyed. And something I'm glad to bring back in to my custom tactics right now. Thank you all for watching the video. I appreciate you. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.